All right, it's seven o'clock. So um, we are going to start with the swearing in. And we're at an abundance of caution. We're going to ask Mr. Myers to be sworn in again, even if he's already been sworn once. Mr. Oates has already been sworn. So if you three will stand. I will read the oath, and then I'm going to ask you to sign it, and I will sign it. You guys ready? Sure. Ready? Raise your right hand. I, I state your name. Eric Myers. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly and swear. swear. And sincerely affirm. And sincerely affirm. As the case may be. As the case may be. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. According to law. According to law. My duties as a member of the Granby Center Advisory Committee. As a member of the Granby Center Advisory Committee. For the town of Granby. To the best of my abilities. So help me God or upon penalty of perjury. So help me God or upon penalty of perjury. Thank you. All right, let's take a minute to sign. You sign the first line where it says sign. And then I will sign. If you don't mind, there's some additional contact information. Yes, we don't have that already. Do you want it to be in pen? Oh, so, so you need him to fill out the back too? Just so we have, I mean, we have your email addresses, so just cell phone. public who's watching on Zoom, we're just fit finalizing some paperwork swearing in the members of the committee. This is our first official meeting, so bear with us for just a minute. Next item on the agenda is to call us to order, so I'll officially call the meeting to order. And before we um, get into introductions, I want to take a second and, um, to thank you all for your willingness to serve on this committee. Um, I know every single one of you has got your plates are already full with your business obligations and your family obligations and your other community service obligations, so I'm very grateful for you taking the time. This will be a heavy lift for us. But um, at the end of the process, I think it's uh, going to be very rewarding. We'll have goals to end up with something that um, can help guide the town both in its long-range planning and, and trying to achieve some of our collective strategic goals. So I appreciate the, your guys' willingness to serve. Um, the next item on the agenda is just a just brief introduction. So I think I know everybody, but I'm, maybe everybody doesn't know each other, so we'll actually start with Kathy on your side. I'm Kathy Kane. I'm the recording secretary. All right. It's me. You too. I'm Meg Jabaley. My real name is Margaret, but I go by Meg. That's it? 
Oh, you have me on a show. Oh, so where do I start? Tell us something about yourself uh, and why yeah. you wanted to be on this. Yeah, yeah. So I just graduated recently from Boston Architectural College with a design for a human health degree. So we did a lot of work on urban planning and community wellness, and from the micro level to the macro level, trying to make sure that our built environment is serving us as we continue to build it and move forward. So, and I have a lot of uh, background in theater education, and so my love of sort of educating, community outreach, and making sure that the end user is very much served and heard, I think all kind of comes together in this. Thank you. And inclusive design as well. Abby Kenyon, I'm the Community Development Director. Uh, Marty Schwager, um, I'm a native of Connecticut, growing up in Farmington and West Hartford. Um, my wife and I lived in Simsbury and uh, moved to Granby in 1999. Uh, we have three children. Uh, they're all um, out of the house, so we're, we're empty nesters. Um, I've been in the real estate industry for uh, many years. Uh, I don't want to state how many, but quite a few. <laughs> Um, working for some of the national and regional uh, real estate uh, management companies, uh, managing real estate and consulting on a, on a third party uh, basis. Um, the portfolio has included uh, commercial, residential, industrial, uh, some mixed use projects, uh, including commercial or office, uh, hospitality, recreation, uh, and some you know, residential in that. Um, some of the projects that I've managed, uh, downtown Hartford, uh, Goodwin Square, and the Goodwin Hotel, uh, City Place. Um, and currently I have my own um, property management and consulting uh, business. Um, and I've been fairly active on uh, municipal boards and commissions, serving on you know, various committees, subcommittees, and currently I chair the Development Commission. Thank you, Marty. So hi, I'm Eric Myers. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm gonna call it, I'm 55 years old. I'm gonna call my time in Granby around, we're gonna round it to around 47 years, only spending time away for college and a few short breaks away. So I do consider myself a lifer in Granby. I have three children, all of whom have gone through the Granby school system. Uh, one still in senior year of uh, high school. Uh, so very familiar with the town, active in various town committees, politics, and currently serving on planning and zoning. Uh, I grew up uh, in a construction family, spending my first, uh, probably as soon as I was old enough, two, 10 years working uh, summers, weekends uh, in the family construction business and uh, doing all sorts of things like that. And went to college and somehow landed at the Hartford Insurance Company where I've been for 31 years. So go figure on that. So that's me. Okay, I'm Mark Fiorentino. Um, we moved here from Las Vegas in 2009. Um, I'm currently serving as the first selectman in Granby. My kids grew up here as well. Uh, both graduated from um, Granby Memorial High School. They've been out of the house for a few years now. Um, prior to my service on the Board of Selectmen, I, was, I served on the Board of Ed for a number of years. And like all of you here, I'm, my service includes a lot of other boards and commissions. Um, I also have um, stated this publicly probably a million times now. I, in my career, for the vast majority of my career as a lawyer, I was a land use lawyer. And um, in Las Vegas, during the time where Las Vegas was the fastest growing city in the country, so I have a great deal of experience um, representing both developers and municipalities and working with municipalities on issues just like this. So I'm, I'm excited about the work we're doing for Granby. So my name is John Oates. I have lived in town for my entire life thus far. I don't want to like jinx that by saying that out loud. Um, went through Granby schools, Valley Preschool, kindergarten, and the building that's now the daycare at the entrance to Stony Hill Village when Stony Hill Village was a cornfield. Wells Road School when it was small, the old middle school before it was part of the high school and then the high school. Um, I have a degree in accounting and count my lucky stars and my parents didn't lose their mind when I graduated with a four-year degree in accounting and came home and said I wanted to be a fireman. <laughs> um, but it's worked out okay. So I spent um, 20 years working for the town of West Hartford's fire department, left there in 2008 to become fire chief in East Hartford. 
Uh, did that for 13 years uh, until literally two years ago, my phone rang, somebody said, hey, we'd like to hire you to run, and currently my, my current position is president and chief executive officer of a nonprofit that's headquartered in Virginia that does data analysis, data analytics, data science, research for fire service and emergency service organizations. So that's been what I've been doing the last two years. Um, I was the town's fire marshal for about a decade, um, very long decade, um, and uh, there was something else that I was going to throw in there too, but it just, it, the opportunity to, to serve in this group I think is, I was fortunate, I mean, I've lived in town long enough that I remember when the center of town didn't have traffic lights, but at the same time I look at projects. I worked in West Hartford when, you know, when Barry Feldman had the vision to, to cobble together a bunch of ugly car dealerships and some, some very sketchy three families and build Bubeck Square. And in my time in East Hartford, looked at what the, the struggle was with, with development in, in certain places and pockets and how to do that in a, in a way that makes sense, it's smart. So um, it's an opportunity to, to get back to the place where I've lived my entire life. So, that's me. Awesome. It's kind of the A-team. This is exciting to put us all here together working on this, so thank you. I forgot to mention, I have two kids in the Granby school system. Here's pictures of them playing. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we have architectural precedents. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely place to live. We've only lived here for three years, and we love it. You also forgot to mention that you live right down here in I the live, center. Yeah. yeah, I live on Oak Ridge, which is, I mean, yep. that's right up against it. We do the chain link cut through. <laughs> we show it to you. <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda is to elect a chair and vice chair. So we can start with the chair. Does anybody have any nominations for chair? I'd like to nominate Mark Fiorentino for chair. Does anybody want to second that? I second that. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, any nominations for vice chair? Eric Myers. I have a preference. You want me to just spit it oh. out? <laughs> Go right now. Yes, sure. I have asked Meg if she'd be willing to serve as vice chair if if uh, oh. if she was so invited. Okay. So nominated. Um, thank you. I'm just thanking him for the nomination. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now let me say that now that we have elected that. There's a lot of work for all of us to do. So, all right. So the next item on the agenda is to review the committee charge and scope. That, that was included in our backup. Um, I'll turn it over to Abby in just a second. I, I want to say this, though, because um, I, I went through it again before I got here today, and I was reminded um, what a great job, actually, the Planning and Zoning Commission has done um, preparing that scope for us. So a lot of the roadmap which will change, I think, as we go through, um, uh, maybe in slightly different curves and iterations, but a lot of that roadmap and the foundational work, um, the Planning Commission spent a lot of time and put a lot of thought and effort into it, so, so it's a great starting point uh, for us. That was the recommendation that they made to the Board of Selectmen who officially adopted that charge. So anything to add to the charge, Abby? I will say, as I went through it, um, it occurred to me that there are a couple things um, that um, we should uh, work on tonight in terms of identifying where we want to start in that charge and where we think the best starting point is. But um, does anybody else have any other questions about the, the scope or I comments? There's, there's a built-in relief valve that allows the subcommittee to modify the scope to identify. So I don't, and I, it's not timely, so if there's something that pops up as we go through this, I don't think it'd be a problem to add. The only thing that I see, and it's, and it's notional, it doesn't mean anything, I, part of me would, would like to see the public engagement process closer to the top than the bottom. And I know they're not designed to be considered in this order, but you know that visioning piece, I think, becomes important. 
You're 100% right, and we're going to talk about that tonight. Because right. I agree with you. That's, I think, actually the starting point. And uh, I don't think the scope was meant in terms of the way they... I, it didn't feel yeah. like it was prescriptive, <laughs> but I just, like, I see it at the bottom, and it's just hanging out there, and I'm like, yeah, it seems to me. I appreciate that. I'm we're glad gonna, you got that up. We're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight. I think ahead. a little bit about the history of the scope. Um, the Development Commission, we took a quick look at it, you know, prior to getting over to planning and zoning. And we grappled also with where the public engagement you know, should be within the scope and what parts they would be involved with. And of course, the vision was up at the top of the list. But we, we didn't put it at the top of the list. We looked at the other you know, zoning regulations and infrastructure part of it, and we weren't quite sure how they how we would be incorporating public input on those aspects also. So it's not just the vision that the public needs to be involved mm -hmm. with, but the, you know, the, whole, the whole process. So um, we might be slightly guilty in putting that down at the end. We knew it had to, had to be incorporated, but when we look at the wording of the, of the scope uh, and that section, um, we do draw importance to it in how we are going to engage that, um, especially uh, with the help from you know outside consultants and how that because it is a having the public being engaged is a huge process. It takes a lot of expertise. It takes focus on various um, aspects of the of the scope and of the whole study. Um, so it's. It won't be just vision, it's going to be a lot of other things. So I just thought I'd mention that. And that's kind of what, why the, the public engagement part, um, we knew it was important, but it did get at the end, but that wasn't on purpose or by design. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Eric? No, we spent quite a bit of time uh, reviewing the uh, proposal that came from the commission. We talked about it on planning and zoning, and I'm comfortable with the scope and wherever we believe the public comment and input can be incorporated I think we should do it and even if it's not prescriptive it can be done ad hoc mm -hmm. and uh, I'm wondering if uh, during these sessions when we meet since we are um, being recorded and whatnot uh, trying to figure out a way to encourage people to listen right now we have two uh, which is great but more people to come and uh, uh, other <coughs> options for them to participate I have a lot of that's kind of within my passion is the end user, deep, meaningful, authentic engagement of all ages. So let's let's start there before we move on to the next item on the agenda and just make sure I'm hearing what I think I'm hearing, which is there, do we have a consensus that at least initially our work should focus on the development of the vision? Mm -hmm. that that's where we should sort of start because it probably will guide a lot of how we how we approach the other parts of the scope. So you nodded. You nodded. I, so two thoughts after during the conversation is the the public input almost becomes a vertical that goes across all the pieces of the of the yep. charge. But to that, I, I think yes, but with with the caveat that it's malleable, right? We, if we start out with the vision is 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 X, that may that may tweak. Sure. Over, over time, is it as the the ebb and flow? But developing that certainly would add some direction to, to where we're going, what we're doing, and keep us from flopping around. And I think it's kind of um, there's a graphic here. It's a cycle, right? Mm -hmm. We get um, this is a design thinking graphic. There may be better ones for different people, but like we're kind of defining the problem with public input, and then we're going to get more evidence. We get like lit reviews, architectural precedents, uh, watching people in town, working with kids, everything. And then ideation, prototype, and then we go back to public input. And I think it's like, to your point, it's, it's just it's, gonna, it just keeps, it going keeps, circle. keeps circling. Keeps going circle. And that's not a bad thing, it's just iterations of kind of a way of thinking about it instead of linearly. Yeah, so I, I I'll get to you in just a second. Already. So, so I agree 100%. I think it's a, it's a classic chicken or the egg sort of thing. Do we develop the mission first and, uh, or do we let the work feed into the mission in, at the end? 
this feels to me like we should develop the mission first in being malleable. It'll change as we get through, or it might change, but at least it guides us what we do next and when. As far as the public input goes, I think I agree with the wisdom of the, you guys that led to the scope, which is that a lot of it, the bulk of it, should be in the development of the vision. That's where a lot of people's initial input should be. But if you guys have watched me handle meetings and stuff before, I, I um, ask that we put a public session on every agenda, and I do expect every component of what we're doing that we provide the, the community, the public, who's, who wants to, an opportunity to, to provide input. In different forums to do that, like when we did um, an inclusive walk where we looked at our center and then we met at Mapleview and had a discussion, but if people didn't want to talk, they could do sketches or post it. So allowing people to, in whichever way they can be included, because sometimes people aren't going to pipe up on Zoom or yep. come to yeah, town hall. Yeah, and, and especially to a fellow citizen. You know, yeah. They may not, yeah. They may not be comfortable in doing that. Absolutely. So that's why yeah, there is an importance of removing that from this committee yeah. and from others in town where, where you need that third party to come in and try to extract right. from folks. So, which is how a lot of you know, municipalities do it. Yeah, I just help Southwick with theirs, yeah. All right, so do we have a consensus that the mission is a good place for us to start? The vision. The vision. The vision. vision. There's a difference, keep correcting me. The vision. The strategic. All right. So here's my idea, let's, get, let's keep going with that. Um, one of the reasons I was excited to have Meg on the committee is this is her wheelhouse. This is what she studied. This She has a tremendous amount of experience in terms of doing these kind of things, the public workshops and the charrettes and that kind of stuff. So my thought is to ask Meg, if you're willing to do it, to before our next meeting, so we can review it at our next meeting, develop a recommended process yeah. for us to do some community outreach to develop the vision. Yep. That doesn't mean ultimately we won't go get extra help, but I've watched Meg actually do it in smaller parts, and I think if, if she's willing to kind of recommend to us, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if there are components of that that you think we might need outside help with, right. th then make that recommendation. So the, then we can make a decision on that process. Is everybody good with that? And just for full transparency, I have reached out to uh, the superintendent. We're meeting about looking at how students can help us actually actively be a part of the design process, which I think is really cool. Right, so I think what we would be looking back for you is what, what groups do we yep, approach? Groups how do we do it? How. And what is the what mm -hmm. is the process? Everybody cool with that? Absolutely. And then that way, if I bring it back and I'm missing a group too or something I haven't thought of, we can go back. I think it's also helpful with, <clears throat> with that as the individual and the group identification of what we are looking for from. I mean, obviously, it's, it's wide, wide, it's very broad, it's very wide open. But all right, so for business owners, these are our curiosities. For commuters, these are our curiosities. For property owners, you know, to so because I have found in people probably have to like if you just go there with a hey what are you thinking you're gonna get I don't know you know no, so I think yeah. the ability to, to kind of shape that up front to, to I think you get better engagement yeah absolutely like for our walk we we centered it around who's being left out yeah so how do you center it so that there's an anchoring question yeah. and so we're really trying to see what great thinking is out there but yes excellent point okay so the other, again, before we move on to the next item on the agenda, the other item of the scope that I thought we should talk about a little bit tonight was in your area of expertise. When? Uh-oh. Um, at least I'm presuming it's in here. So you can tell me, no, there's no way. Which is, in, in the scope, it's a lot of it is centered around item number two in the scope in terms of um, doing some inventory of our current underutilized and vacant properties and that kind of stuff. So, um, Marty, do you think that you and or the commission could make a similar recommendation to us? Aside from the vision input from our property owners and businesses, can you recommend to us a process that we would do to reach out to our 
property owners. First of all, identifying who we think those should be. Yeah. And the business owners to sort of get their input on this, um, the business aspect of it from them, right? What, what hurdles do they see? What kind of vacants do, do we have? That kind of stuff. Is that something that you or the commission could, yeah. similar to what Megan's doing, give us a, here's a structure of how we would go to do about gathering? Sure, yeah, that's, um, at almost every development commission meeting, we talk a lot about vacancy, property owners, uh, properties that are underutilized, that uh, some that are overutilized, or, so we, we do have probably quite a bit of information about that. Um, and sure, yeah, that's something I could, uh, I could reach out and or put together a plan on that. Okay. That'd be a question for you. Um, can you um, tell us what your deadline would be for them to have that stuff ready in order to to put it on the next agenda? Because we have to go through like a a cycle. We got to post it. Yes. Yeah, so the so we discussed meeting the last Wednesday of the month, so that's October 25th, um, to put a packet together by like Thursday the 19th. Okay. Is that doable for you, Meg? Yes. <clears throat> Is that doable yep. for you? Okay. Um, As far as I'm concerned, as we do, as we develop those things, if you guys have questions or formatting and stuff like that, is it okay if they mm -hmm. just contact you? You could be the single yep. point of contact for the whole committee. Mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? All right. All right, any other comments on the, the, the scope or the charge? What I'm gonna do, and I suggest maybe we all do it, is sort of start myself a notebook, you know, so I, when we come to the meetings with the scope is always in front of us, we don't have to have Abby reprinted for us. And uh, so if we can help anybody with that. Um, and that's a good segue into the next two items on the agenda. Um, another good starting point for us again, because a lot of work and effort and history has gone into at least the two documents that um, uh, should inform our work, which is the first is the plan of conservation and development. I'm sorry, plan of conservation and development. And then the second is the existing zoning regulations that govern the town center area. Um, so I, I took the time to, you know, re refresh my memory on, on those. If you guys haven't already, I'd, I'd ask you to do that sometime, you know, before our next couple meetings. I personally don't think we need to go into a real deep dive on those tonight. Um, we can if you guys want, um, and the reason is because again, the scope contemplates us going into a very deep dive on those and making recommendations at, on anything we think needs to be changed, right? So we'll be at some point almost literally going line by line through those. Um, but I thought just an overview, um, and Abby, you wanna give us anything that you think we should focus on as we read those documents or? Um, for both the plan of conservation development and the zoning regulations? Yeah, maybe Mark, I'll just provide some context Please. for how those pieces work together. Yep. So um, the plan of conservation development under Connecticut state, state statute, every municipality is required to adopt one and update it um, every 10 years. Um, so our last POCD was adopted in 2016. Um, so we have a few more years to go, although we probably will be starting the update process soon. Um, there are various items that need to be included in a plan of conservation and development. So looking at housing, transportation, utilities and infrastructure. Um, there's, you know, a whole range of items. Um, typically in a POCD, municipalities will um, also choose like village areas or um, specific study areas that they dive into in a little bit more details and they tend to be, you know, the commercial hub of a town, um, you know, mix of uses. Um, so in the case of Granby, it's obviously Granby Center. So there's a, a whole subset of the POCD, you know, committed to Granby Center. And the POCD outlines various goals for Granby Center and then ways to implement those goals. Um, and the vision here, you know, it, 
it's really about creating a walkable, uh, vibrant town center, mix of uses, restaurants, um, you know, streetscape improvements, you know, things to really kind of activate the area um, and make it, you know, a, an attractive place for people to live and then come visit as well. And so the zoning regulations. Um, so the POC kind of acts as an overarching document. It's supposed to be, you know, the vision for the town, and the zoning regulations really feed into that. So that's kind of on the ground um, how we use properties in the center to achieve this goal. Um, so in the zoning regulations, Granby Center is divided into three distinct areas. So there's the commercial center, which is you know, from the town green to Bank Street. And if you look at the permitted uses there, it's really intended to be the commercial center um, within Granby Center. And then you have the center common zone, which kind of borders the commercial center. Um, and that's more of leaning towards residential, but still allows um, some mix of uses there. And then you have center edge, which is transitioning from the center primarily south along Salmonbrook Street. And that's really more intended to be um, a residential kind of transitioning out into single family. Um, and I know that was quite the process coming up with those three um, Jeremy Center zones, if you will, um, in the, what was that, 2006? I think there's a subcommittee, 2008. Um, I'm pretty sure 96 maybe. It might have, like, some of it started, I don't Like, probably the center stuff was 06. So, um, yeah, so it's exciting. I think that both the POC and the zoning regulations working together, you know, we've seen a lot of changes in Granby Center, um, and I think we're well on our way to kind of achieving the vision here, but obviously now is a wonderful time, especially with um, the DOT project and some vacant properties in town to kind of give it all a, a fresh look and see uh, how we can advance it even further. So that's how those kind of work together. Abby, is there anything in the, the recent strategic plan that was put together uh, that would help in this process or that is mm. not yeah. overriding, but that is uh, that ties into the POCD? Uh, the charter? No, no, the charter is just a strategic plan. That that's, a good, that's, a good, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's put that on the next agenda to, to do a very, like we're doing with these two documents. The, the status of the strategic plan is not, it's not as far as I wanted it to be, honestly. So the, the Board of Selectmen adopted a draft, I'm using, the, I'm using quotes <laughs> on purpose, strategic plan, which set forth a bunch of goals. Um, and it's not final because we, um, our next task was to take it and go back and actually add action steps in. Like what would need to be done to achieve this goal and that kind of thing. That part hasn't been done. And, and frankly, it's kind of fallen, it, not fallen through the cracks. Is we've kind of put it on the back burner because the transition to the town manager's office and everything else we're doing. However, it's still, it would be a good, it, because I know, for example, don't quote me on the exact language, but one of the goals that, that we adopted in that plan is something like to, to um, diversify and strengthen our tax base. And so the work here obviously um, supports that goal if we do it right. Then there are probably other goals in there that we should be aware of. Or it's good for us to, it, as we go through the process, because that was meant to be an ever-changing, valuable document, to recommend back if there are things that we want to take from this process to make sure are on the strategic plan so we don't lose lose them. So yes, I think we should put it on, even though it's not final final, to review that at our next meeting so everybody's kind of familiar with that's a great idea. Right. Yeah. 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 Because the implementation that you're talking about for the strategic plan really won't change that base document. So if there's things in there... You shouldn't. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. if there's things in there that uh, we can relate to in this process. And no, that's a very good, very good point. It's similar to what happened with the plan of conservation and development. There was an implementation committee that... Uh, yes, there was. It went on for a year or so, a year, year and a half, and then COVID came along and started falling flat. There, was, um, there wasn't the participation that we were hopeful of in getting uh, in that, you know, during that process. So, uh, so they're, they're very similar scope as far as you know, 
process. Strategic plan, implementation, planner, cons planner conservation development, and an implementation process. Yeah. So. So we'll make a note of that and put that on the next agenda is, a, is to do a quick overview of our strategic plan as well. It's a good point. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Um, can we spend a minute, can you, and, and can you put it on the screen because you included in our packet sort of the map of those zones? So one of the questions I had with, related to this map is, these guys know because they work with it every day, but can, can we use this as a base to develop a, 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 um, a working map for our use? So we take this and maybe put more of the streets on it so we can kind of know exactly what we're talking about and, and also overlay I thought we should overlay the water, the sewer, and the gas lines <coughs> as a starting point. All you gotta do is check the boxes. I understand that there's no box to check <laughs> here. <laughs> Just check the boxes, it'll do whatever you want. So that was actually a, a question, Abby, because I know that the town's made investments into, into the GIS platform. Mm -hmm. Do you have access to all of Esri's stuff? Yes, um, however, I will say with the gas, some of that- um, It's probably not accurate. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can, you know, give a rough idea of, of where those utilities are. And we have accurate mapping for water and sewer. I'll only speak for myself when we go around the table. To me, I, I know you can do it, I'm sorry. But to me, for this notebook that I want to bring into every meeting, sort of a working map that we put the other information on so it's all in one place. Mm -hmm. I'm not as technically savvy as John there to bring my own computer and actually look at it while we're sitting here. Yeah, so. and some of those, um, actually those layers aren't available um, on our online one, so I have access to that on the back end, so I can uh, generate those maps. Um, I, I will only mention this, although I don't intend it to, to go get us down a giant rabbit hole in our first meeting, is I do think one of the next priorities for us to discuss, if you all agree, we can put it on the next agenda, is uh, where in the process do we set the boundaries of the, of the area we're studying, right? Um, again, chicken or the egg. Um, but I do think, it may not have to be right at the next meeting, but I do, to get everybody thinking about where, when do we set the outer reach of what we're studying. Is it early on? Is it somewhere in the middle of the process? Is it near the end? I think it's early on. I do too, and, and Eric said it, it, that he thinks it's earlier. I do too because it, it also, in, this is only a portion of what we need to do to implement our strategic plan. And to, um, and so as we, as we get to the outer boundaries of this map in particular, we start to have some impact on the other zones. And so just making sure that we know where we're going and where we're not going. During some of the planning and zoning commentary when we had, we were discussing scope, um, there were some comments, I'll just discuss them at a high level, um, that would have had a ton of scope creep with folks offering that we look all the way down as far as stop and shop and other areas. And it's, and while I appreciate and understand the concept, it's not the center and um, we can't look at everything time and, uh, uh, we have so my recommendation would be to focus on the center uh, and yeah. they're different animals too so they, they are although some we say that's all, almost a whole sim separate project and to, with, with right. Right. Is, is there I, I, I'm afraid I know the answer to this question but is there decent enough records because that was one of Mark touched on something that, that I have a curiosity is when the zones were being applied and overlaid, there obviously had to be some deliberative conversation about where those lines are and what that is. Is there enough documentation and meeting minutes or notes or stuff that, that can kind of define that? Because I, it is some curiosity. It's like, okay, how did how did that end up in center commons versus you know what how those decisions were made or or what the the threshold was to understand 
well, I was looking at one that for the historical overlay, I'm like, why is that place not, you know, mm -hmm. so it was obviously a year of construction built, looked like it was the criteria for the historic overlay. It's like, okay, it'd be, it'd be interesting to know is like some of those details, because I think it would be informative as to how something ended up in, in which particular zone for the, for the less than obvious mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, I do believe that there was a whole subcommittee put together uh, to come up with those three zones, so I'm sure we have minutes um, on file with the town clerk, and uh, Fran might even have some old files that I can dig through in the filing cabinet be to see what we have. I think, that, I think it started with the Development Commission, uh, and you're right, I think there was a subcommittee <clears throat> that was paired off to, to do that. I think as far as the edges go, there is some fungibility there, I'm sure. I wasn't there when they set those boundaries, but I'm sure there is some logical, logical uh, logic applied to by just virtue of where the lots were. Uh, I do know, I will share, that uh, we received an application at our planning and zoning session last night to actually adjust one of those lines, uh, move a piece of property that currently sits in center edge to center common. Commercial center. Commercial center. Um, and um, it, on the surface, it looks like a, not an issue. But again, I'm just drawing to the fact that I think some of those lines were drawn around lots for convenience. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Mm. So let me take a, a stab at it. So, um, all right, Abby, could you? Um, take responsibility for making a recommendation to us of where you think the boundary of our study ought to be. So just for starting purposes. I, I agree with everything that's been said. I just think we should make an educated, transparent decision. Mm -hmm. Why did we stop here? And and then it's somewhere in the process, it'll either be early on or somewhere in the, I think we will then end up, by definition, um, suggesting back to the Development Commission and the Planning Commission, there, is there anything, when you get back to that review outside, um, that uh, where the two kind of tie together? Is there anything specific that we recommend to you, you look at or not look at? That's that's kind of how I see it. But either, you, oh, sorry. No, no, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, either thinking. way, there's gonna be connectivity. Right. So, you know, we may have a boundary, but it may be a little more fuzzy. Obviously, it can't be too fuzzy, but we're still going to need to figure out how does everyone access this. Yeah. So is everybody okay with Abby making a recommendation to us? Mm -hmm. Any objection to Abby just putting that on our base map for discussion next time? I'll label a draft. That's a good idea. It should always be. It should be draft until we're done, done. Right. <laughs> when you're in a charge is correctly worded by saying initial boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. It's going to yeah. move. Yeah. Um, Some fluidity will have to happen. Yeah. Fluidity is great. Right? <laughs> better than fuzzy. Fuzzy. <laughs> it's almost better than fungible. And as far as I'm concerned, Abby, I think we can uh, we can ask you to take um, responsibility for the um, how much you want to put on any particular agenda, right? Mm -hmm. So if if you think that everything we just talked about plus that is too much, we could, I'm asking you to help us meet it out. That discussion sounds simple, but I, I suspect that it could, could take us some time to walk through it. And, and so if you don't, if you think it's too much and want to move mm -hmm. it, we're gonna, I'm gonna authorize you to set the schedule. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. And is there value in like a shared Google Doc or something where we can, as we work, put things in and where if you have maps, you can share them? Um, like a working document for yeah. the group. Let me think about this. Yeah, yeah, and if not, yeah, that way we could just kind of take a look mm -hmm. more, even though you're very good about yeah, sending it out. Yeah, we'll definitely get things out in advance. Um, we have to be careful. Though, yeah. Right? yeah. Because we're subject, we're subject to the open meeting requirements. And right, transfer, good yeah. point. Yeah, it becomes a, yeah, it drops, becomes a yeah. public record. So yeah, just that makes yeah. perfect Mindful. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I don't know how to use Google Docs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so Planning yeah. Conservation yeah. Development, Zoning Regulations, Zoning Map. Any other any other questions or anything that you wanted us to be thinking about on those three, Abby? No. And this is, does it, everyone understand how zoning works? Just to kind of get the 
I'll just do a quick. So. Why, are you, why are you giving me <laughs> the evil eye? Who <laughs> gets <laughs> confused? I'm well, I do. Well, I'm I'm <laughs> so if a use is permitted in a certain zone, that means um, that an applicant does not need to appear before planning and zoning uh, to, let's say, open you know that retail use, um, unless they are looking to build new construction or make an exterior addition or some sort of site change, then they would need to come to planning and zoning for site plan approval. Um, but otherwise, permitted uses, the commission has decided under the regulations that the zone is, uh, or they're acceptable in that zone, appropriate, no further uh, review or comment is required. Special permit uses are uses that the commission has determined they could be okay, but there might be some issues with them that the commission wants to evaluate an application and perhaps assign conditions to mitigate any concerns. Um, so for instance, in some of the Grammy Center zones, you know, a restaurant could be a special permit use and the commission might want to set limits on hours of operation um, or you know, some other aspects to, to make sure that it's there are no issues with the surrounding area. So that's just and as Special permit use under state statute requires an automatic public hearing where the public has an opportunity to uh, provide input. Site plan approval does not require a public hearing. However, it has been the commission's practice to still have one anyway, just to uh, gain input from the public. I will say, well, actually, first of all, I'll fess up. The preparing for the meeting was the first time I've read the zoning regulations for the town center, and I, I would say that I was struck that there's more structure in there than I thought there would be, frankly. And um, and then um, I, the other thing that struck me was most of the uses would require a, a hearing and a use permit. There are very few things that you can do as a matter of right. Don't know whether that's right or wrong, I just thought that's my first take of it was that the structure, how the structure works. So. And again, at the, our scope, and I think uh, you know the, the most detailed work we will do once we have the guiding vision in place is is to go through this line by line. Do, are these still serving what our mission is? Do they need to be changed or modified or not? So, all right. Um, so the next item on the agenda is an idea I stole from my days back on the board of ed. Um, that we kind of try to wrap up every meeting with uh, both Kathy having and Abby having a specific list of anything that we are expecting to do, you know, action items between now and the next meeting. So, so my notes were you're going to develop a, a proposed process on um, getting public input on a vision, and you, you Marty, were going to develop a proposed process on getting business input on vacancy rates and those kind of things. Correct. Um, Abby was going to prepare a, a draft map. What else? Kathy, do you have any, did, did you note anything specific? I did, but my pen just ran out of ink. Uh -oh. All right, we'll come back to you. Abby, <laughs> I, have, I got um, one. I just had to get it. Thank you. The maps will do the boundary of the town center for discussion, and then also we'll add the strategic plan to the next Excellent. Time. Excellent. Anybody else have anything else for the action items? I just have written down to get it to you by the 19th. Thank you. I disseminate it. All right. So the next item on the agenda is a public comment session. So there's no one in the room before I go to Zoom. Just a kind of a reminder. I'm, I, I think we should try to um, have the rules for public session to be as close as the rules that we use in the Board of Selectmen, only because they're the rules I'm used to. And so um, generally for the public that wants to speak, um, we will ask everybody to limit their comments to five minutes. That We have discovered that that's plenty of time usually for those of, that have their thoughts. Um, we will set a timer. And we'll have the timer um, have an alarm that goes off so that you'll know. Everybody in the room will know at the same time when the five minutes is up. Again, I think we've learned that that's just better. It, it, it keeps me or whoever the timekeeper is from being distracted, wondering how far you are in to your five minutes. Um, if um, you have, we will uh, take note of whatever your comments are and your suggestions. We will try not to have, in these sessions anyway, because as you just heard, we're going to set up a whole process for public input. We will try not to have a lot of back and forth. The, the purpose of the public session is to hear your thoughts, 
write them down, make sure that we're, they're informing the work that we're doing. If you have questions, what, um, the way we like to do it is get them all out on the table. I will write them down. Um, and um, uh, at the end of public session, as the chair, uh, it would be my responsibility to make a determination on whether uh, we can, I feel like we can confidently answer the questions um, tonight based on the information we have, or whether we have to, you know, hold it over to another agenda and address it then. So having said all that, um, is there anybody on Zoom who would like to address us in public session? Just raise your hand or let Catherine know and she'll get you in. All right, welcome. Start with your name and address, please. Yeah, this is uh, Michael Ware, 45 Hungary Road. Um, we moved into this property almost 30 years ago, so um, I have a couple of quick comments and then just two very, very simple questions. Uh, the first comment is that I really do appreciate all of you, as Mark said, you all have busy lives and the fact that you're taking the time to do this is very greatly appreciated. Um, also, the questions I have are, one, is this committee time boxed? What is, when are, are you supposed to be presenting recommendations to the DOS? And two, while the committee is going through this process, um, I think it was uh, Eric mentioned that there's a zoning shift from uh, center edge to commercial. That zoning shift is between the Station 280 apartments and the center of town. If those types of shifts are going to come into conflict with the vision statement that you eventually produce, are the rest of the boards and committees in town aware of the process you're going through and able to bounce changes between now and when your official recommendations come in off of this committee to you know keep all of the different town boards in sync and i'll wrap up with that thank you all right Thank you, Michael. As I just said, we'll hear from everybody and then we'll go back. Um, anybody else? On Zoom. Going once. Going twice. Okay. All right. Um, so I will try, Michael, to answer those questions. The, the first one is no. We when. Um, the Board of Selectmen did not um, assign the committee any definitive time frame to respond. Um, so there's no, there's no date specific for us to make our recommendations. That, that was on purpose because there's a lot of work to do and a lot of it is, as you've heard us discuss, um, community driven and that, that uh, takes time. So. We may change that ultimately. As we get closer along, we may decide amongst ourselves to um, impose a deadline on ourselves to work backwards from, but we currently do not have one. We also currently have no official direction to any of our uh, committees. Uh, the planning and zoning would be the one that would be uh, directly impacted to um, uh, not hear or, um, or postpone items in the study area. Um, again, that was intentional because we, uh, we weren't sure how long the process would take. Um, to adopt uh, something official, we would probably, if not legally, advisably, would have to officially adopt something so that property owners uh, you know, could be aware and, and those kind of things. And um, so we did not do anything officially there. I will say there was also, though, a, a fair amount of thought in the, the um, the makeup of the commission. There's a reason that we asked a, a, uh, the committee to include a member of our planning and zoning commission, and that's to address your final thought, which is, do, are they even informed of what we're doing? They are by definition informed through Mr. Myers. Um, 
Um, I suspect on the Board of Selectmen, we, we will, uh, every once in a while, if not on a set schedule, I will report out to the Board of Selectmen where we are in the process. I suspect the Planning and Zoning Commission will do the same. And I suspect that, and I trust Mr. Meyer's judgment to inform the Planning Commission if they get an application that they think is of um, either a scope or of the, a particular um, issue that might be impacted by the work they're doing, that they take that into consideration, which they have the authority to do. So, just to, uh, yeah, not, on, please. not an additional answer, just a clarification no. uh, on a comment made by uh, Mr. Mr. Ware. Um, the proposed uh, lot line shift or into and out of a different district is not on the station 280 side. It's on the other side of the commercial center. Oh, okay. Um, it would be uh, on the uh, corner of uh, Route 189 and Route 10. So just a piece of information. I apologize. No, no worries. Just wanted you to have the right info. Yep. All right. Thank to, you, Michael. To your point, I think you would have, you would have had to publicly notice and create a moratorium for every activity in, in that zone well before this moment. That is correct. Yeah, that, that is correct. And, and that's a very much a double edge. So. Yeah, so to that point, while we, I will absolutely bring matters back to the commission as they're developing, uh, we have to conduct normal business unless there's a moratorium, otherwise yeah. it will have to continue to do so. Yeah. That's correct. Yep. And we do do lot line shifts. So. Not regularly, but we've done them, and we'll look at them all. Okay. That, I think, completes a public session. Does anybody have anything else be, before we adjourn? <clears throat> if not, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody who participated. Thank you all. Our next meeting is the last Wednesday of October. So stay tuned. Thank you. Fourth, fourth Wednesday. Fourth, I'm sorry. There are five Wednesdays. There are, Wednesday. It is the fourth, the fourth Wednesday of every month, which isn't always the last Wednesday. So this next apologize. meeting, let's get the official day. October what? 25th. 25th. Because I'm going to put it in my calendar. Okay. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay.